payback huh. So I'll take that Ask them now what we'll say that I've been going to the top and I got what they not So I know that they hate that All in can't beat me up Cause I'm back in my zone now Cause I'm back in my zone now Man, what was I thinking? I can't drive this stupid car down this road. Ugh. It's ridiculous. All these companies, they're trying to cram evolutionary down our throat as revolutionary. Just jump in with two feet already. I'm gonna make it an enduro bike. I'm gonna make it slack and long. It's gonna be like it's from the future. Yeah, I'd like to see that. To figure out what bike's gonna be like in a decade, all you have to do is go back 10 years and apply that change to what we're using now. It's simple math. I would want to make this bike. This is my dream bike. What do you think? Uh, this looks weird. Can you help me with this? Yeah, that's, we can have a try, but there's a lot that's going on. Dude. Look how long that is. Go in there, suck Oh shit. I have no idea what is gonna happen here. Wearing the helmet, of course. Let's drop in. Today is the big day. Today is the first test ride of the Grim Donut. Uh, I put the frame together, I built the bike. I don't know what's gonna happen, so I'm gonna be fairly cautious. Now, Genio has had this thing on the test rigs. They've run it through their tests, it's passed. But still, have you seen how slack the front end is? So, we're gonna drop in, we're gonna be cautious, see how it goes. As far as what I'm looking for, definitely, obviously the big thing is handling. I just, I'm curious. I know this handling is gonna be amazing. I just need to know how amazing it is. I'm probably gonna set my fastest time ever. Jesus, this thing is slack. It's definitely felt interesting. I mean, I've only been riding it for, I think I've been moving for a total of 45 seconds and I've hit my pedals twice, but that's the price of speed. Holy shit, <laughs> amazing on this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna make some suspension changes here. We're gonna speed things up a little bit. We're gonna stiffen the spring rate up a little bit in the back. We're gonna soften the spring rate up in the fork a little bit. Uh, as predicted, that slack front end, it's, things are different. Things are feeling strange up there right now, but we'll do some tinkering in and keep going. Corners matter the most. Here we are, our first tight corners on the Grim Donut. This one here uh, kind of gets tight. There's a step right there. And then that second one is even tighter. I've ridden this section a thousand times on trail bikes. It's pretty quick on a trail bike. Grim Donut, 57 head angle and a wheelbase about the size of a Winnebago. Let's see what happens. So I've come through there five times now. Uh, every single time, halfway through the corner, I'm like, why didn't I come through 20% faster than that? And I go back up and I come in a little bit faster each time and just traction, loads of traction and control it feels like. Okay, wow. So that's the first day of testing done. I'm still alive and so is the bike. Uh, honestly, I'm blown away. I mean, I knew I would be. This is the future. I knew I was on to something with this geometry. This is definitely the way forward. It feels like I'm in the middle of a tandem through that rough stuff and the wheels are just doing their thing and I'm safely in here. Maybe there's some things to work on in the tight stuff, in the climbing bits, but overall, we're on to something. So I've been out on the Grim Donut a whole bunch, and man, this bike is fast as hell. But I can see a place or two where it might not be ideal for the average rider. So I'm gonna call up Chris Kokalis at Pivot, because he definitely knows a thing or two about balancing what pros want with what average Joes want. Hey Chris, how's it going? Good. Good, good, good. So, You've no doubt seen the Grim Donut, that crazy bike we built. Never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, that thing 
you know, I've been riding it. The geometry is way out there. I've been riding it and I think it is just amazing. But I'm going to have to sell this thing. And I'm wondering how you guys, when you design a bike, how do you go about balancing like what your pros might want with what like the average person might want? It's actually interesting with a lot of the pro athletes. Uh, it, 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 obviously, it depends a lot on the athlete, but Eddie's a great example. Um, they, they definitely do not go for uh, as much the current trends of as long. Um, mm -hmm. I actually once had an engineer tell me at a, another bike company say that none of the feedback from their pro racers really had any effect on the production bike. Would you agree with that or? I, I wouldn't agree. I mean, it's, yeah. it, again, it depends on the athlete and what you're doing with them. Yeah. Um, you know, Eddie didn't have a lot of input in our fat bike. Yeah, no doubt, eh? <laughs> It was interesting with Bernard because he was very skeptical on going from 26 inch wheels to something bigger mm -hmm. and the same on 29. Yeah. Um, so there's just a little bit of wanting to hang on to what works for you. For sure. That's a um, classic racer mentality though, isn't it? Geometry, the way the bike handles, what it does, um, that, that stuff, that feedback is important, but it's also important for us to filter out where it's coming from. So you don't think if they could pick their head angle, they wouldn't want a 57 degree head angle is what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Well, there you go. Grim Donut, two slack for Bernard Kerr and Eddie Masters. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, Chris, thanks for your input and your advice. I'll see what I can do. So there's some good takeaways from that conversation with Chris including that maybe 57 degrees is too slack for even World Cup pros. Also, that a lot of their racers don't like to change their setup. They know that they're fast when they're doing this, so why would they change? They might be slower, of course. Uh, but the other thing there that he said is that pro racer feedback does matter. That means I'm gonna have to get somebody real fast on this bike, and I'm also gonna have to learn about testing. To do that, I know a guy who's tested a fast bike or two. His name's Aaron Gwynn. You might have heard of him. Let's give him a call, see what he has to say. But first, I'm going to go to Tim Hortons. Hey, Aaron, it's Mike from Pink Bike. How's it going? What's up, brother? How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm hoping that you could give me some advice, though. All right, what do you got? Well, have you seen the Grim Donut, the bike that I designed? I have. I've seen it. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> Well, I need to test it now, and I figure you've tested a lot of stuff, so I'm hoping that you could tell me, I mean, I know how good this bike is, but I need to test it to figure out how good it is. How so, good it is. So how do you test? You've got a new bike? How do you do it? Um, I, for me, when it comes to testing, I usually start on the old bike, and I'll do three or four runs, and it's something I'm already familiar with, so I just get a feel for the track that day or whatever and then I'll swap over to the new bike, and then I'll do three or four runs to kind of allow myself to get comfortable on that, and then I'll just kind of keep going back and forth, and then I repeat that process over however much time it takes to basically figure it out, usually multiple tracks, multiple days. Um, you know, you, you've got to kind of sort of find a base on the new bike too sometimes because the suspension settings don't match over perfectly most of the time, at least the shop usually doesn't. So I try to get that thing dialed in and then just kind of go back and forth. So the Grim Donut is obviously in prototype stage right now. And, you know, in the back of my head, there's definitely a little bit of concern about, you know, this thing breaking, maybe that front end peeling off. When you're, when you're riding a prototype, do you ever entertain those thoughts? Like, Not too much, no. I think thankfully for me, the people that build my prototypes have been doing it for a long time. So um, I'm not nervous about riding them. And they do a lot of testing in-house. And, um, you know, they start with computer testing. They go to rig testing. They do all kinds of different stuff to kind of make sure that if they give me something, it's not going to kill me. Yeah. But you really try to avoid things like the head tube snapping off. Have you, have you seen the Grim Donuts head tube angle? Speaking of head tubes snapping off, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> so you can understand why I'm asking this question. <laughs> so it sounds like you go by feel, and I mean, I feel like this bike is amazing, so I'm going to do some testing, and then maybe we could talk about getting you a pro model, you know, maybe a Gwyn Donut. Oh, the Gwyn. 
Uh, I I have been known to love me some donuts. One more thing you and I have in common, dude. <laughs> yeah, but I am pretty happy with uh, the current bike, and I think you know just keep working. You know, okay. you found an interesting path. Just let me know how that goes. Okay, we'll do some testing. I'll let you know how it goes, dude. Thanks so much for the advice. Sick. All right. Good luck. Take care, dude. See ya. All right, so Gwyn says we have to do some back-to-back -back testing, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. After all, I need to confirm that the Grim Donut is the best bike ever. Yoan Borelli is with us today. He's brought his enduro race bike, and we're gonna do some timed laps to see exactly how much better this thing is than a normal bike. After all, my marketing strategy of repeatedly telling you guys that this thing is the future will go a whole lot smoother if I can get a pro to agree with me. There's a lot of traction. Like I don't know if he actually pedals well, but the traction is actually pretty amazing. The bottom bracket is super low and you hit the pedals a lot. So that's gonna be a little bit of an issue. So I'm kinda, uh, I'm intrigued. Now you're gonna do it on the common cell. Mm -hmm. The donut is a 57 degree front end. 57! 57. 57. <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't know that. Your, your common cell is 63, 63 and a half? 63 something, 63 yeah. and a half. Okay, so there's six degrees there. Yes. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> I can't ride my back. I'm gonna go at 80 to 90% and see how that goes, okay? Okay, three, two, one, and go. It's definitely a little bit dry and loose today. That's okay. The track is actually pretty cool right now. It's good, yes. Little jump here. Back in the inside. Yes. Over here. He's getting his speed. Woo! Yoan has just completed his first timed lap. He's done it on the common cell. 209. Yo, and what's the KOM, the previous KOM? I think 227 or 228. So he's just taken 18 or 19 seconds off the KOM on his first attempt. Next up, Grim Donut. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> hey, what I do you think is going to happen? I don't know. I'm curious. Let's go. Let's just do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Lap on the Green Donut. Let's see how that goes. Starts in three, two, one. Rolling. Okay, right away, the bike is pretty fast, which is kind of pretty surprising because this bike hasn't been tested at all. They just did it, winged it, and here we go. Full gas, laps, little jump. Whoop. I get inside here, yes, it was. On the pedals, in the corner. Definitely harder to pedal. Than the common side. But it feels pretty grounded. A little bit inside here. I lost the chain, it's back on it. Ah. 
Ahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah